Hi, so about six months ago, I did a video on using the M1 Max for Flutter development, and what we found was that it worked perfectly fine. However, some of the tasks, the initial compile time, for example, was quite long, especially on the Android uh, simulators. So a lot has changed since then, and uh, Flutter 3 was released yesterday on May 12th, and there's a lot of new stuff packed in this release, and the paragraph that caught my eye here was this one. So Flutter is now fully native for development as well. So it has always been compatible, but some of parts were in the development were going through the Rosetta, and because it's native now, this they, they claim that this enables much faster compilation on M1 powered devices. And so I thought I'll just do those tests again, and we'll see how much faster compilation has actually become now that development is native. So uh, let's dig into it and take a look. Okay, so we'll just start in the terminal, and I'm just going to do a flutter create, and I'm going to call it test2. I already have a test one. Okay, sorry, the F is missing here. Okay, then. and as soon as I do that, it creates a skeleton app for me. And as you can see, that didn't take that long at all. Uh, hardly any time. I'm just going to move into this folder. So let's change into test two folder and <clears throat> run the VS Code editor here by saying code dot. This will open a VS Code in this particular folder. And there it is. And uh, now I just go to the basic uh, main dot dot file. And now over here, you have the option of the devices on which this can be run. And you can see that Mac OS is now listed. It was not previously the case. Uh, we'll do that later, but first let's actually go into the uh, Android emulator. And I'll start the Pixel uh, 5 emulator. And that's just coming up. By the way, if you don't have the emulator, the easiest way to, to install that is just to get the Android Development Studio. It has a device manager and you can just configure your emulators from there. That's what I have done. It is native M1 and so as you can see, it comes up pretty quickly. I have not experienced any problems with it. So that's up and running. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and run it. So start debugging and this will start the process. Now, I'm going to leave the link in the description to the previous video from uh, Flutter 2.2 from six months ago. And if you run that, you will see that at that time, this particular process was taking more than a minute, about a minute and uh, 10 seconds. The first build would take long, but after that, the hot reload was very fast. And hot reload is always fast with Flutter apps because you know once they are in the device, you can just make a change, do a save, and it immediately updates the interface on the device. But now even the initial load, as you can see, is not taking that long. So it's significantly faster. It, this took about 30 seconds, I think. And uh, yeah, and then it just starts running. And of course, hot reload, uh, as before, is gonna be uh, very fast anyways. So color blue, for example, if I just make it red, just to demonstrate that, and I just do a control save, immediately it becomes red. So that was already the case, but the first load, time has been cut by less than uh, cut to less than half so that's very significant and a big improvement for uh, development of flutter on the m1 max so next i'm going to run the same code base on the I uh, ios emulator so i'm just going to start the ios simulator like this from within vs code this is just coming up this is the iphone 13 pro max and uh, yeah there it is and again it's pretty snappy it's native of course because it's apple anyways and again, we'll do the same thing. We'll just go in and we'll start debugging. And as you will see, this will take about the same amount of time and it will not be a problem. So overall, I think my experience while this is loading of a Flutter app on the M1 has been good. It was already good. The apps that were being produced were universal binaries, but now with native M1 support on the development side as well, I've noticed that everything is faster. And so it's, uh, it's quite nice. And remember this laptop is now more than a year old and so it's holding up its own very nicely and the m1 mac the basic chip on the air uh, perfectly fine and of course this is the 8 gb machine because people often ask that and it has got no bottlenecks on the memory <coughs> for uh, this kind of development of course this is a skeleton app as your apps become bigger it might take longer but the process is fairly efficient so this is uh, loading up right now. It's running the Xcode build. I don't like to cut these videos in any way so you get a real sense of the time that it takes to actually build these things. And so it's running a little long, but you know you will get a good sense of, of uh, the time because of that. So we'll just wait for this to finish. It takes about 35 to 40 seconds. There you go, 46 seconds for the build. And uh, there you go, it's coming up and boom, it's done. And again, it's working perfectly fine. So that's as far as the iOS build is concerned. And so in fact, in the version 2.2, when it was not native, the Android build was taking much longer than the iOS build. Interestingly, now the Android has been optimized so much that it's actually faster than the iPhone build. So, you know, you uh, gain a little bit over there and you lost about 10 seconds here. But again, it's all uh, overall the experience is much faster. 
So I'm going to stop this as well and just to show you uh, the Mac version as well because this was not previously supported. But now from the same code base, you can also do a native Mac OS build. So let's do that now and uh, just run it. And this time it's going to launch on the native Mac app. Now you get a lot of warnings, so don't worry about these. It runs anyways. So it's building the uh, Mac OS application. Um, it's just showing Mac OS Darwin as a target. And it's not going to take that long in my experience when I ran it previously. There we go. It is done. And so exactly the same app, this time formatted to look nice on a desktop app. So this is not a web app or anything. This is not an Android app running, or oh, sorry, uh, an iPhone app. This is a native Darwin Mac OS app. And that's brilliant, right? So the same code base was previously already there on the mobile uh, side. It's also there now on the uh, native Mac and of course it already supports Windows and Linux. I don't have those but yes you can build uh, those as well. And as a final one, we'll leave this alone. I'll just shut it down from here. There we go. And as a final one, uh, we can also of course still do the Chrome web build. So let's just do that for fun anyways. That's the last one. And uh, let's just run it one more time. And this time Chrome is going to come up waiting for connection to the debug services on Chrome. And we'll just take a look at the time it takes over there as well. So while this is loading, overall Flutter has really matured. Now, whenever Google comes up with something, on, whenever there's a new language anyway, there's always a little bit of a fear for a new development environment that you might invest a lot of time in it. And then Google might stop supporting it. There you go. That didn't take long. And again, as you can see, the same thing. And you still have the heart reload. I'm not going to demonstrate that. It works exactly the same instantaneous on all of these devices. But with Flutter, I think Google has doubled down on it. So now it supports desktop, mobile, web, um, all the desktop flavors, and they're really, really leaned into it. So I think the future of Flutter from what I can see is good. And it is an excellent choice if you have multi-platform uh, application to develop. And as you can see, zero code base changes. It just works across all devices. I mean, it's phenomenal. Every time I think about it, I'm blown away um, that this is even possible. But yeah, Google has supported this well, and uh, I think it's going to keep getting better. So happy coding on your M1 Mac with Flutter.